thanks very much. Um, yeah, thanks for making it out of bed, guys. Um, nice easy start to the morning for 15 minutes. I'm going to be demoing our new product, the producer, which you will all have got in your um, goodie bags when you uh, uh, when you registered for CPPCon. There's a little memory stick in there with the Juice logo on, and on there is a very early um, preview of the producer, which you can have a go of. We're kind of soft launching it this week. Um, we'll be releasing a public beta in the next couple of weeks when we do our, our Juice version 4 launch. Um, so a quick bit of background for the guys who haven't heard of what Juice is. We're, um, it's a big, one of these big do-it-all frameworks, kind of in the Qt style, in the sense that we have everything from GUI frameworks, um, <coughs> networking, you know, cryptography, and a lot of audio stuff. And we're probably the, the most widely used framework in the audio music tech industry. Um, so most of the plugin, audio plugins and audio apps you see are pretty likely to be built with Juice somewhere in there. And what we tend to get in that, in, in that industry is a lot of very customized user interfaces. Um, you'll see lots of really crazy, customized, weird sliders, weird um, displays for uh, feedback of all kinds of some musical um, audio um, data. So, what I, and what I seem to have spent the last 10 years doing a lot of is tweaking pixels on user interfaces. So we'll tend to get, um, we'll, we'll have a very customized UI, and we'll, I seem to spend a lot of time nudging a font size or moving a, tweaking a gradient color or you know, moving a line around, hitting compile, waiting for the app to start up again, going back to that part of the app and uh, seeing if it's in the right place. And no, it's still two pixels to the left, so you go back to the code, tweak, tweak the graphics again, and go around. And the nature of the kind of interfaces we do also means that it doesn't lend itself very well to GUI designer tools, because they're, they, they're less dynamic. Um, we have a GUI designer tool, and people, people do use it, but when you're doing really complicated interfaces, really the only way to test and iterate on these is to actually change the code and see what happens. So the producer was an attempt at um, augmenting the, your normal workflow with a way of taking a little part of your app out and just viewing it on its own in real time while you edit the code. So I will give you a demonstration. The, the slide you've got there isn't PowerPoint or Keynote. I'm just going to zoom out. That's a little um, piece of code that I wrote last night. And the code is over here on the right. Um, really, really simple. Anyone who's ever seen Juice or Java or uh, QWidget Q type classes will recognize this as a little widget class with a paint routine that just draws the stuff that you can see on the screen there. Uh, so it fills the background. It, uh, <coughs> it sets a font. It prints the producer at the top and does a few things. Now, um, say I'm not happy with this. Like, I think my name's a little bit small on there. So uh, let me see. This is the, I think this is the bit where I set the size of my name. So I can just adjust that, make it a bit bigger. The, I've put a kind of radial gradient around the thing, but it's, it's not quite right. So let's, let's tweak that color a bit. And this is, this, the, the tool you're seeing on the right is our, um, it's not an IDE. We have, uh, a tool called the Introducer, which was the predecessor to the Producer, Pro being a bit better. Um, and this has been Juice's uh, project management tool for many years now. <clears throat> and it lets you build uh, a project with a typical file structure, as you've seen in many other IDEs. Configurations here let you set different targets like Visual Studio, Xcode, and it spits out those project files. We're not trying to get rid of the, the, uh, the tools that people use from their everyday lives. I still use Xcode, we use Visual Studio all the time. This is kind of a management tool for that. But now we've bolted into it the LLVM compiler. So that we also have a, a place here where it'll build the code, pull out any classes it recognizes. And then what we're seeing over here in this window is it's instantiated an instance of this component on its own without actually running the app. So it never calls main. It just pulls out one class, creates a bit of magic boilerplate, and runs the whole thing in the JIT engine. So I was. Um, I was just tweaking some numbers there. And if you, if you change a literal in the code, it can detect that and inject those directly into the running app. But it's also very quick if you want to rewrite. So like, if I don't want our logo there, I'm just going to comment that out. And it's gone. Um, 
And by doing some really clever pre-compiled header tricks and not getting rid of the running code until we've got a replaceable uh, compiled version to replace it with, you get a very nice feedback loop where you can just sit, on, sit with one window open showing the result and another one showing the code and just tweak it and see in real time what's going on. So I'll show you some more examples of this. Uh, in this little demo project, we've also got um, this one. This is on the, memory, on the memory sticks that you guys have got. So if you were to install this and run it, you'll see pretty much this as a starting point. And here we've just got a little animated um, bunch of circles moving around with an algorithm. And I can go to the code for that by hitting view code. And it'll show me where that came from. Um, and we've added some little helpful hints here. So saying, hey, try this. And so there's a the background color. Um, what else can we tweak? Uh, I don't know what that number's going to do. It makes them bigger. You can have fun playing around with that. Um, and then once we'd, when we got to this point, we realized this is actually a really great tool for beginners because um, if you're learning C++, then this is, what we can create in here is a, um, a space where you can experiment and see immediate feedback of what's going on. So we very quickly coded up a little um, example here. This is a live console component, is the name of the class. And if I go to this one, you'll see this, this is the entire code. That's the whole thing. It's, it's just a, a, a UI component. But at the top, we've created uh, a little function called print your stuff here, which can call a few member functions. And if you, if you, I'm sure you can see the similarity here. We've got hello world being printed, and we can see hello world here on the left. So if I was to take that out, we'd see that the uh, stuff on the left would change. Um, this just prints the numbers from 0 to 10, but if I change that, we can see in real time what that would do. So we, we've actually already had some interest from some university departments who, te who teach C++, saying this would be a great thing to have in the classroom. So that a beginner can just look at the, work on the syntax, not have to worry about how to actually build that stuff or run it or know about you know, anything other than the very basics. Uh, also in here, we've got some other demos. We have, um, there's a game of life running which is quite fun because you can change the rules um, while it's running. Uh, because this is just running any code, it's, there's, there's no restrictions on what your code does. Um, in, in, so we, we have things like over here we've got um, a sound component. This one opens up the audio device, which you probably can't hear, and is generating some audio. So if I go to the audio generator here, I could probably tweak a few parameters and make it sound horrible. That's just made it stop. But um, in what we do um, a lot of in the audio world is designing audio algorithms and things. It's, we, we've actually got another little component which is pretty much like an oscilloscope. So you can sit there playing with just one part of your uh, DSP code and see the results like live in an oscilloscope, rather than spending a long time changing an algorithm, wait for it to recompile, fire up your app, and, and then blow your speakers. Um, so internally, what's actually going on here is we've got the, um, the Clang we've built into the app, and we've hacked around so that as it's actually parsing the code, we also do a few tweaks to the abstract syntax tree. And do a few, a few clever little, little tricks like replacing all, when I'm moving literals around, um, all of those literals have been replaced internally by global variables that we can then link back to places within the code. And then when it sees it that uh, the text that has changed a bit of code that's only within the space of a literal, then we can just go in and poke that global variable without interrupting the program. Um, we've got, then we have a bunch of auto-generated boilerplate behind the scenes that actually creates the entire window that you see over on the left with all of these buttons at the bottom as well. And the whole thing is, like, that's running in this window is actually jitted. So even the editor around it as well. We, um, we've got some plans for doing some more advanced stuff to this. Um, I actually first demoed this product, pro project about three years ago. And we had um, a feedback loop 
in here as well, so that you could have, it could actually look at component layouts, figure out where the code set their position, and that you drag them around the screen whilst going back and changing the position in the code in a very meta way. And um, we're going to revive that with a, it's a much more complex part of the code, so that'll be coming in a few months. Um, and I'm down to four minutes left, and I know there's always, always a lot of questions when I, when I demo this, so any questions? Yeah. Uh, the question is, are we using OpenGL? We're not, but we can. Um, if I open uh, another project here, we've got an example of that. This is, uh, I'm opening now the big juice kind of kitchen sink demo, which has a whole bunch of uh, different demos inside it. You can see it compiling here, it's pretty quick. And this is, because this is compiling the entire juice library now, and maybe 100 compile units of the demo. But I'm confident it'll finish quickly enough that we can actually see this. But one of the demos we've got in here is OpenGL, and it'll happily run it um, inside the window. Um, while that's loading, any, any more questions? It's early. Um, at the moment, we've got a Mac version. Um, we're in the middle of Windows uh, build, which we're hitting some problems with. Uh, Clang's Windows support at the moment, but as soon as that's um, uh, ironed out, then it will be all cross-platform. Juice is completely cross-platform. We run on um, Xca uh, on an OSN, Windows, Linux, iOS, Android, and embedded platforms as well. And we're probably going to have bare metal versions too soon. So this is finished compiling now. So somewhere in here we've got an OpenGL demo. <laughs> Yeah, so that's um, quite happily running the, uh, an OpenGL window with our OpenGL 2D rendering engine um, sitting on top of that. And um, there you go. Uh, quick question. Yeah. Is this infrastructure plausible with some other developers in mind? It's not because we have to take control of the entire compile chain because we have to mess around with the syntax tree. But um, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to use our editor. So what will happen is if you've, if you've got your project open in this, running the, the live windows, and you have your other editor open and you hit save on the file, it'll, it'll diff, it'll see the changes, do a diff, and you'll still get all the very fast update um, loop. Yeah? Um, well, the, the windows on the left are running in a child process. So if that dies, we just start it up again. I think it's died at the moment. So yeah, I can restart, and it should just come back on. Any more, any more questions? We have one minute left. Yeah. Um, can, the question is, can we integrate it into the running application? Um, it, we, it, it would involve putting the whole of Clang and LLVM into the running application, which could be done. I mean, we, this could all be encapsulated in a DLL, which you link into your application and throw C++ at it and run. Um, yeah, that could be done. But I'm not sure what this would give you over just using LLVM itself for that. Um, it's, it, it depends what you want to do, really, whether that would be sensible. Anyone else? Yeah. When does it decide to recompile the code? Um, it has a few different modes. What we've found most useful is um, it has a little timer, so if you stop typing for more than half a second, it, it, kicks, more, it kicks off a compilation. So it's just not being in the middle of modifying the Yeah, you could be in the middle of modifying it. We have another mode. You can turn that off and have uh, like a build button that uh, forces it to recompile, or just turn it off altogether and um, turn it on and off. And we have a few different modes we're experimenting with. But it's really easy to change that. 30 seconds. Anyone else? OK. Good. Thanks very much.